What's up everyone, my name is Arthur and welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna to continue on with the PwC Assurance Academy case. Today we're going over task three, which is calculating materiality. If you're new to the channel, check out my last video where I go over task one and task two. I also have a number of videos on other virtual internships like KPMG and BCG. So if you guys are interested in a more consulting kind of work or data analysis, definitely check those out. Even if you're not really sure if you're interested in consulting or data analysis, because they will definitely help you develop some basic skills like PowerPoint and Excel. In my previous videos, I've also talked about cryptocurrencies and how I started investing using CoinSpot. If any of you guys are interested in that, I'll put the link up here. If you sign up to CoinSpot using my referral code, you will also get a free $10 worth of Bitcoin once you deposit some cash. If you're just interested in the topic, definitely check out Binance. Link is also in the description. They have tons of videos explaining cryptocurrencies and blockchain from beginner level all the way to more advanced insights. So let's get started. So this is the task three screen, calculating materiality. And to start off, I just wanna explain that materiality is the effect an amount will have in various contexts. So during the audit planning process, the auditor decides what the level of materiality will be considering the entirety of the financial statements to be audited. An example is instead of looking at whether a transaction of $1 or $1 million is considered to be material, the auditor will refer to the percentage impact that the misstatement may have on the financial statements. So in light of this, uh, what we're gonna try and do is uh, calculate some benchmark numbers based on uh, three different measures. So um, what we're gonna start off is, I'm just gonna create a bit of a table, which is essentially how we're gonna solve this problem. So we're gonna have the different measures for FY 2019. So EBIT, total assets, and sales. Now, the benchmark numbers that we are given uh, in one of the handouts, uh, and then we're also gonna need the reported numbers. So let me start with uh, earnings before taxes. Actually, this is a mistake, it's not EBIT. What we're looking for is earnings before taxes. Um, it's not quite that same number here. So we're gonna go to this document and this is where I'm getting the benchmark numbers. So we have annual profit before taxes. So it's not, that's not EBIT. So that's actually a mistake. Um, uh, earnings before taxes. So this EBIT is, um, is, is not that because uh, earnings before interest and taxes. But so that's just a small mistake. Uh, you'll see what I mean if you look at the income statement. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna report, we're gonna cap, uh, just plug in the, sorry, hard code in the numbers from the income statement for um, the profit before taxes. And here is just going to be Uh, yeah, total assets and the sales figure, right? Um, and here we're gonna just calculate it using the benchmark figures. Oops, mistake here. There we go. No, oh, what's wrong? Oh, there's an eight. Okay, get rid of that. And let me just do that again. By the way, when I click, when I press FNF4, that's how I get the uh, double dollar signs. Faster, that's just a bit of a shortcut. So I'm just calculating the benchmark numbers for all of the, all of the three measures that we have. Okay, so these, these, these can all be found on the income statement or the balance sheet. And there's no 10% for that. So that's basically it. I'm just gonna format it into accounting numbers. I'm gonna uh, make it a bit more presentable. Sorry, I always get caught up in making it look 
uh, trying to make it look nicer. So we're just going to spend a little bit of time on this. Like that. Okay, it's looking a bit better. And these are just blanks. So I'm just going to fill them in some gray. That's better. Okay, great. So that's looking okay. All right, so going back to here, there's actually really a second part to materiality that we should be thinking about, with, uh, which have got to do with all those factors. So we're gonna create another very small table um, just to at least highlight these because as we'll see, I'm pretty sure these these don't really have a big effect at the very least It's hard to tell from the information that they've given us So we're just gonna write down organization uh, Basically, there's no evidence or indication of uh, risk here. So Accounting same thing uh, responsibility for supervision same thing there financing structure so here we're really looking at the um, current and non-current liabilities so I'm just, I mean, they're both present. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna basically estimate that. I mean, I think there's nothing really wrong here. Um, I think we could do some vertical or common sizing to try and understand uh, things like ROE and uh, potential leverage issues, but I'm just gonna leave it. Um, Cause that's not really what this is about here. Uh, business environment and other factors, great and that will be low risk again. So what I'm gonna do now is, basically I believe that most of them are pretty low risk. There's no real indication that there's issues with them from the, from, uh, the information that we're given. Oh, hold up. Uh, let's move this down. There we go. So what that to me means is we're gonna give them some percentages, which is the benchmark. of basically I'm just gonna go for 3% for everyone. That seems to be roughly the number that we've been giving for everything else. So a conclusion is really a feasible benchmark should be around 3%. Okay. There we go. So ideally, what we would want also is to create a bit of a Word document. Uh, you don't, and Excel is probably fine, but just for completeness, um, I will create a quick little Word doc. And that's what you would really send to your supervisor or um, I think it's Kevin in this case, whoever's looking, at, looking over your work, basically. i add this as well. Okay, small reformatting. You could have done you could have done this all in Word as well. Um, the first table probably easier in Excel, but there we go. Worked in the end, so that's all good to send through now. So that's the end for task three. I am not an audit expert at all, so please let me know down in the comments if you did something differently. One thing that I did notice is that they provide you with a template, which I was very confused in the beginning because it didn't make any sense how we're going to use this. For this task, I believe it might be for the next task. Yeah, just keep that in mind. Um, yeah, let me know how you guys went. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, drop a like, uh, comment down below. I do my best to respond to as many comments as I can. I definitely read them all. So if you have any questions, I'll do my best to try and answer it. Stay tuned for the next couple of videos where I'll be finishing off this PwC Assurance Academy case 
If you guys wanna see more of these virtual internships, let me know what, which ones you're most interested in and I'll do my best to make some videos on them uh, in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh,